Hey guys, my Hogwarts acceptance letter has arrived. Come to Hogwarts with me. Just kidding. But I'm going to the next best thing, the Harry Potter studio tour in Tokyo. The closest station to the studio is Toshimayen. You can catch a direct train from Ikebukuro. The platform towards Toshimayen is thoughtfully decorated to resemble the brick wall at platform 9 and 3 quarters. If you look carefully, you may find some hidden Harry Potter symbols around here, like this broomstick for lost and found. After a 20 minute train ride, we've arrived at Toshimayen. You know you're at the right place when you spot people in Hogwarts uniform. As you can probably tell by now, I'm a Hufflepuff. I must say I was quite surprised. I thought there would be a lot of Gryffindors, but the majority were Slytherins. Watch out for the fierce dragon that guards the entrance. We booked the tour a month in advance and we went for the tour package that included a digital guide and a souvenir guidebook. The digital guide has clips from behind the scenes and chapters designated to various parts of the studio. You can start the tour as soon as you've collected your audio guidebook from the info counter. One of the good things about this is that you can do this tour at your own pace. There are multiple sections to explore. Now we're all set up and ready, let's begin our tour. When you step foot into the tour entrance, you'll find snippets from the Harry Potter films as well as the Fantastic Bee series. You will see staff members holding up signs with a QR code. Remember to scan this code and register to create an account. Use the generated QR code to participate in different activities around the studio. This site stores your photos and videos for 30 days after your visit. So remember to download everything before they disappear. This posted room is a waiting area for the cinema, where an introduction video to the tour is played. You'll be escorted to the Great Hall once you exit the cinema. Most of the staff only speak Japanese, but here's something useful to know. You get to open the great doors of Hogwarts if it's your birthday. There are dining tables that go from one end of the room all the way to the other. Also, there are different sets of uniforms on display to represent the four houses. They dim the lights every few minutes to usher everyone towards the next section, which can be a bit of a killjoy when you're trying to take a look at everything. I guess it's their way of crowd controlling the place. Production design. This part shows you the architectural concepts. To the marble staircase. This is a statue of Hogwarts architect surrounded by the mascots at the entrance. The moving staircases are on the right. The walls are filled with portraits. And if you look carefully, you might spot a number of them moving. You can turn yourself into a moving portrait too. Each of these booths have a machine that scans your QR code. You will then be instructed to move into the recording area. Don't stay in the same pose for too long. The trick is to keep moving in front of the camera. Once you've finished recording, you can look for your portrait on the wall. So what's it like living at Hogwarts? Well, this section shows you the famous dormitory sets that were used in the Harry Potter films. This crimson coloured room is of course the Gryffindor common room. It has a very warm scarlet and gold tone. Some of the outfits worn by the main cast are also on display. There's a portrait of young Professor McGonagall who is the head of Gryffindor. The common room over here has a big contrast to the warm and vibrant Gryffindor one. The cold green and silver tones accurately portrays the characteristics of a Slytherin. Taking part in Quidditch is one of the perks of living in Hogwarts. Simply scan a QR code here to become the audience of a Quidditch match. On to costumes and props. There are eight Harry Potter films in total. Can you imagine the number of props and costumes they must have had? You can take a look at some of the astounding pieces here.
over 25,000 unique pieces of clothing were made in a span of 10 years for the Harry Potter films alone. A number of pieces are displayed in this part of the room. There's an activity wall opposite the costume display. Follow the instructions on the screen to create a Death Eater mask. Look, that's the one I designed. The room of requirement is a hoarder's paradise. Just look at the amount of stuff around here. This mirror looks very familiar. Oh look, is the list for Dumbledore's army. Here's a fun fact. It took six months to build the room of requirement seen in Deathly Hallows Part 2. It took nearly all of the stock furniture from the previous films and 4,000 additional pieces of furniture to create the set. Let's check out Dumbledore's crib. He's a bit of a hoarder himself too, isn't he? The books that line this bookshelves are actually hundreds of British telephone books covered in leather. Shh, don't tell anyone. I wonder if anyone appears in this fireplace. The Griffin stairwell is one of the heaviest props, weighing over two tons, and it went 3.6 meters into the ground. Oh wow, a crowd. Can you guess what it is? It's the pensive. Does this memory look familiar to you? Oh, what's the school? School of the magic. Time to head to potions class. This classroom is filled with hundreds of glass jars holding atypical substances. Every jar contains something different. Not sure what I'm cooking here. Who's ready to face a bogger? There are important notes on the chalkboard inside the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. This classroom is decorated as seen in The Prisoner of Azkaban, when Professor Lupin was the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. The design for Hogwarts Library was actually based on Oxford University's Bodleian Library. There's an archway right next to the bookshelves. It's a very popular photo spot. Time to be courageous because we're heading to the Forbidden Forest. It's pretty spooky. You get to practice the Patronus charm here and use it against the Dementors. Oh, Aragog, where are you? The structure for Aragog has a leg span of five and a half meters, and the animatronic figure took nearly 100 technicians to operate. Hagrid's hut is outside the Forbidden Forest in an open area. You can find Hagrid and good old Fang chilling inside. We can find so many nostalgic scenes from the Harry Potter films, like this giant wizard's chessboard from the Philosopher's Stone. Recognise the bridge? Yes, it's the wooden bridge that leads to Hogwarts. This was actually not in the original novels, but it has now become one of the well-known Harry Potter settings. Feel free to hop onto the night bus if you are stranded witch or wizard. It even comes with a matching purple bus stop. The bus stands at a height of 6.7 metres, and it was created from pieces of three vintage London buses. 
Two night buses were used for filming. One was motorised, allowing it to be driven, whereas the other one was a stunt bus that spun on a turntable. There are other iconic vehicles, including Hagrid's bike and the flying Ford Anglia. One of the most prominent settings has to be number four pivot drive. You can step inside the house and learn about its design and concept. In the first film, The Philosopher's Stone, the exterior of the house was filmed in Berkshire. The house was then reconstructed on the back lot for the later films. Poor Harry, the cupboard under the stairs does look very dingy. There are Hogwarts letters flooding into the living room. And we have Aunt Marge blown up into a balloon at the dining table. Over here we have a very detailed kitchen. It's remarkable how much effort was put into making these sets. This is the exterior of the neighbourhood. It looks like an actual house that you would find in the UK. All that walking really gave me an appetite. To the backlot cafe. For a quick bite, you could grab some sandwiches and bento boxes. The hot food section has house-themed meal sets that comes with a drink. We got the Hufflepuff and Gryffindor set. The Gryffindor one is a roast dinner that includes roast beef, veggies, chips, Yorkshire pudding and gravy. The Hufflepuff one comes with a roast chicken leg, some carrots, greens, a slice of bread and a very realistic plant. Time for the taste test. The roast chicken leg is marinated with some aromatic herbs, making it very appetising. It's topped with a sweet sauce. It's not bad, but I personally prefer savoury gravy to go with my roast. This plant is a crispy cheese ball that sits on a bed of mashed potatoes and baked beans. I couldn't figure out what they used to make the soil. Don't worry, it's definitely not real soil, but it does look very convincing. The slice of bread comes with an olive oil dip. Each set meal comes with a drink. I chose iced tea for mine. Adjacent to the Backlot Cafe is the Butter Beer Bar. Each butter beer costs 1,100 yen. The bar also offers other drinks and snacks, such as popcorn and crisps. The bar is sheltered, so you can enjoy your butter beer even if it's raining. Ta-da! Every butter beer purchase comes with a tankard for you to take home. Take your tankard over here once you're done. There are basins for you to give it a rinse. The cashier gives you a plastic bag when you pay. You can use it to carry your souvenir home. We need to head to platform nine and three quarters before we miss the Hogwarts Express. The railway shop opens from 10.30 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. You can shop for some Harry Potter merchandise here. There are wands, mugs, accessories, clothing, etc. Personalised Hogwarts letters are available too. You get a letter, an envelope, a supplies list, a Hogwarts seal and a folder for 2,600 yen. Oh, would you look at the time. Let's board the train. Each carriage features a scene from different Harry Potter films. Do you recognise any of them? Apart from Harry Potter, there are also sections dedicated to the Fantastic B series. Some of the Harry Potter sets took over 20 weeks to build. The set construction floor gives you an idea of how much work was needed to bring the sets to life. The amount of plaster and paint it must have taken is mind-blowing.
The Ministry of Magic set made its debut in Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix. The extravagant interior will surely make you gaze in awe. You can enter the Ministry of Magic by using the Flu Network. Simply scan the QR code next to the designated fireplace and poof, you come right out of the smoke. We can't leave out the bad guys. They have their own wardrobe showcase too. Can you believe all these are props? Everything looks so real. When you've exited the Ministry of Magic, you'll be led into the Creature Shop. It's filled with cabinets displaying the creatures that appeared in the films. It even features all the animal actors. Dragons and basilisks are some of the most powerful yet deadly creatures in the wizarding world. Which one do you reckon would win in a fight? Oh blimey, look at those teeth. As you can tell, the goblins required a lot of prosthetic makeup. It took about 175 makeup artists to prep the actors. The broomstick experience allows visitors to experience the magic of flying by using a green screen. By paying a fee of 2,500 yen, you get a video of yourself soaring into the sky and a wanted poster with your face on it. Sound was a vital part of the films. From the sound effects to the music scores, every component was crucial to set a scene. You can learn about it all in here. Diagon Alley drew inspiration from the streets described by Charles Dickens in his works. You can spot some familiar names like Ollivanders, Gringotts, Slug and Jiggers, and Weasley's Wizard Weezers. The mannequin outside the shop is 6.1 meters tall, and the entire shop front took more than three months to build. I'm not sure why blood is coming out of this peculiar looking sculpture. It looks a bit morbid. If you know why, please let me know. The graphics department for the Harry Potter films is all about the details. After all, the details help bring the story to life. Walking down this corridor gives you a rough idea of how much work and creativity was put into designing posters, newspapers, letters, mats, etc. The Hogwarts model is a masterpiece from the art department. The castle was featured in the first film, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It took a team of 86 artists and crew members to build. It's installed with over 300 fibre optic lights to imitate flickering lanterns and lamps. Oh, and the rocks and trees are made with real gravel and plants. The Wand Room. As its name suggests, is a room packed with wands. Individual character wands as well as special collections are up for sale. The studio shop is the largest shopping area. Watch out for the flying books and soaring phoenix over your head. On this side, we have Nagini chilling on the wall and some floating candles. The Gryffindor sword must be a very popular purchase. It was already sold out when I got there. I was fascinated by the displays in every section. You have things like flying broomsticks with Quidditch balls as well as virtual snow falling from the ceiling. Keep a lookout and let me know what's your favourite. It's like a department store in here. Look at this place. It's madder than Mad Eye Moody. No wonder they have to set up a finger post. People can get lost in here. People like me. It's good to know that you can personalise your gifts. There are specific stations you can go to for this.
just when I thought I've seen all the merchandise around here, I come across chibi Harry Potter characters. I never knew they had chibis here. They each have their own rice bowls and soup bowls. So adorable. Harry Potter snacks including crackers and biscuits are up for grabs too. Even if you root for the Death Eaters, don't worry, you will not be left out. In fact, they have quite a lot of villain stuff here. On top of that, you can buy scabbers. That rat. Right opposite the studio shop sits the food hall and frog cafe. Traditional British foods such as shepherd's pie, fish and chips, bangers and mash and all day breakfast are available at the food hall. If you fancy a snack, you can pick up some baked goods and drinks from the frog cafe. Outside the studio stands some artistic sculptures that you can take pictures of. Here are some tips that I've learned. Give yourself at least 4-5 to five hours to tour the studio. Eat and drink something before you start. There aren't any vending machines or tuck shops inside, so it might be a while until you get some food. This brings me to my next point. It's a good idea to bring a bottle of water with you. Remember to use the same QR code generated for your email account when you sign up. This ensures all your activity pictures and clips are saved in the same place. Ask the staff at the info desk if any special events are taking place. When I was there, they had a Halloween event where you could say trick or treat to staff members wearing headbands and they would give you Harry Potter stickers for free. There's so much to do and see at the Harry Potter studio. Make sure you plan ahead and give yourself enough time to make your way around the place. Anyway, I'm off to catch my train to Hogwarts. See you next time.